how do you balance uh, analytics, uh, uh, you know, data-driven decision making, with your own insight, uh, personal experiences, or basically your gut feeling when it comes to making a decision? How how do you balance those two sources of uh, information? So <clears throat> it, that's fun uh, for me. That's the fun part. So. We have our investment committee uh, once a week, Neam, where we uh, we have a six-person investment committee where I've I brought diversity across the firm to sit on that committee, and we hear new ideas, we hear final presentations, um, and ultimately you, you have that final meeting, Neam, which is go or no go, final IC, and it's a six-member committee. I'm always the last to talk. I let the room go first. I work around the room. I gather consensus. You know, certainly we're looking at the modeling, we're looking at the diligence, we're looking at the quality of the assets, we're looking at where the asset is located. And then by that point in time, we've already spent a lot of time with the management team. So we know who they are, we know their personality traits, we know their credit score, we know what is. And ultimately, you have to make a bet on humans. I know that sounds so inherently basic, but you know, when you do get to final investment committee and the returns are right and the assets correct and the business plan is good and you've done all the analytics and you've spent three months and you've spent three, four, five million dollars, you ultimately have to come down and look across the table and say, that is someone I'm about to put multiples of billions of dollars into. Do I trust them? Do they have good character? Do they work hard? Um, do their employees like them? Um, does their family like them? I mean, there's so many factors that go into the quality of the human being. And um, I bet the athlete at the end, the math can pencil out and it can all be good returns and good diligence. But if you're not comfortable with your partner and you're not comfortable with their vicissitude and their gumption to want to wake up and fight every day, I know if somebody's a fighter or not. It's really simple. And executives that come across my desk that don't know how to fight and can't swim, I don't invest in them. How do now you that, know that? That's the, how that's do you know sort of if somebody the, is a fighter? Well, you, you, you do a lot of work. Um, you interview them. You ask them tough questions about, you know, talking about their toughest moment as a child, talking about their toughest failure, um, finding out if they compete, if they know how to compete. Um, have they ever, you know, competed at an elite level? Do they understand what it takes to win? Um, you ask them what they do on the weekends. Um, you ask them to reconstruct, you know, their, their family life. You ask them to reconstruct their childhood. There's a million techniques that I use to get into somebody's head to figure out, are you a winner or are you someone that sits on the bench? Sorry, Fabulous. it's a bit tough, but you've got to ultimately, you know, find the inner workings of someone's desire to want to fight and figure out if they're up for the fight. Cause not everyone name is up for the fight. I understand. Well, that certainly works for your case because last week when I was researching uh, Digital Bridge uh, to prepare for this meeting, I was looking at your uh, stock performance and uh, you uh, you did not mention it, but uh, let me mention that you've been outperforming uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ, not, not only them, but Bitcoin and Ethereum over the last year since you took, uh, took, uh, took the position. Uh, by a wide margin. And that was before the crypto crash of two days ago. So uh, you've been you've been doing fantastic work there. Well, uh, I didn't know that, by the way, <laughs> but thank you for saying that. I think, um, look, I think uh, when you become a public company CEO, you stop looking at your share price. Um, what I've come to figure out pretty quickly is if you consistently, Neem, beat your numbers, and you consistently put out clear guidance and your messaging is clear about how you're going to grow and most importantly, how you differentiate yourself against your peer set. And then you can back it up with data on how you're kicking the shit out of your peers. That's how your stock price moves. Exactly. Ooh, sorry for sorry for cursing, but um, I'm a competitive human being. I want to win. I want to win the right way. Um, I want to win with um, a high degree of efficacy um, and I want to win you know, with the right people. Um, but creating the right business plan, creating the right mission, and being really good at communicating is so important. You want to outperform. You want your stock to work. You want your stock to perform. Um, you just got to work a little harder, and you got to you got to beat your peers. You got to wake up every day, and you got to want to win. Last year, on a global basis, we did 198 megawatts of leasing. 
we're a small REIT. We're a fraction of Digital Realty and Equinix. Mm -hmm. Neither of those organizations did over 125 megawatts of leasing. The two largest data center REITs in the world, we almost doubled their production. And we're the small scrappy private guy. Why? We just wake up and we want to win. We want to punch a little harder, we want to move a little faster. That ultimately is what, 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 what shareholders want to hear. Right. They want to hear that you're going to go out and you're going to work harder and you're going to win the hustle points.